I don't have the schematics for these. I've figured out recently that I've been saying schematics, schematics wrong for ages. Like I've been watching a lot of videos about other, you know, repair YouTubers recently and I, I think I've been saying schematics and everyone else is just saying shim or the other way around and now I'm totally confused. But anyway, I don't have those blueprint thingies for this, but let's make an educated guess about what the functions are on this board. Well, these they look just like uh, variable inductors, but I, I suspect that there's a um, LC inductor capacitor circuit in there to create an oscillating sine wave. If you open up Porter Studios, then the BIOS oscillators always look like that. And usually there's a larger one for a race, but I think that board there is the race oscillator. And then you can see there's these the trim pots for the four biases for the four tracks. You've got your power input here. I don't see any voltage regulators, but there's all these thicker cables going to different parts of the circuit. So I would say that those thicker ones are going to be power distribution. And therefore I would guess that the various transistors and diodes that you see here, and also the larger capacitors are responsible for taking ripple out of the DC input and stepping it down to the various voltages that other op amps and so on need in other parts of the circuit. So power, erase bias, record bias, and then these two op amps here and these smaller capacitors would be to do with amplifying and filtering your headphone out because that's your headphone socket and that's your pitch control. So that is roughly what that board is doing. Before I go any further, I just want to acknowledge my own bullshit a second after. I think I was saying that these are the two sides of the same PCB. Uh, they clearly aren't. It's two separate PCBs. Um, you've got a record playback amplifier here, and this is all your mixer functions. When I was partially taking this apart before, I didn't completely remove them. It looks like they come out by clips here. Let's talk about what's happening here. So these are your uh, manual switches about record arming and everything. We can see that there's... Uh, four groups of three trim pots and uh, they're labelled on the board. You've got the EQ and uh, playback level for the record amplifier and then we've got record level and same thing for the other three channels. So let's see here which channel is which. You probably figured that out from the numbering. So R105, yeah 305, 305, 205, 105, yeah. So the first digit in the number will show you which component pertains to which channel. You know, there's usually a, a numbering scheme on these, even if you don't have the schematic or schematic. Still don't know how to say that word, but you'll be able to figure out what's what by looking at the numbers written on the components. Not on the components, beside the components. And you can see that these components come in groups. So the, these are going to be associated with, you see these long integrated circuits, they've got a Dolby system on it, so this has got a uh, Dolby noise reduction. Um, so that will be setting up the timing for the compander. I'm not sure there's much else to say about that board. Over here you can see all these op amps, one per channel, so I guess that will be the input gain for the four channels. I'm not actually sure what those two trim pots are. Oh, meter calibration, it says beside it. So, you know, I guess you can put the same signal into your two input sockets and um, if one side of this meter is lighting up more LEDs than the other in response to the same signal then you adjust these trim pots and that will sort out your problem. Obviously these will come off so you could access these switches. No need to take those off by the looks of it, but those two anyway, if you need to uh, put lubricant or whatever in there to get those clean, you could do that. This might look familiar to some of you. I think you can see that that's basically the same transport that's in Porter 1, Porter 2, which other ones? Porter 5. When I was briefly using this before taking it apart, I did notice that the head array was a little bit slow, raising and lowering, which would indicate that the grease in here has started to behave more like a glue. That's a common thing for this transport. So I will be taking this apart. Before I remove this PCB, we're going to want to remove these springs from the um, switches here. So I've just got a pair of tweezers and uh, you can just take them off and store those safely somewhere. 
one, two, three, four, five cables. These four are sturdy enough, I can just pull them out by the strength of the cable themselves. This one looks a little bit more delicate, so I'll pull that out with Dono's pliers. With those cables out of the way, the way that these switches connect to these plastic tabs here, a bit of a wiggle, but then I'll tip up like that. So I a bit of a wiggle, these need to be pulled back or they catch on this lip here and it doesn't come out. Um, that would give you access to any soldering or anything you needed to do back there. Then on the other side we've got a large screw and a small screw that need to come out here. There's a little, um, what is that, fiberglass? I'm not sure, but there's a little black washer there. And uh, there's a the pins are on this side and there's a header on that board. And with that meter out of the way, I mean, you could just attach that there if you didn't want to undo this tape. I don't mind undoing that tape. Uh, same idea with these bits of tape here. Okay, so this bit of shielding needs to come off as well. That's the sort of screw that came out of it. There's a clip here. Is that going to want to come out now? Yeah. So that's that PCB detached from this chassis. To remove the transport from this plastic chassis housing, whatever we're calling this, then um, I'm going to want to take this button array out. That's attached via two screws here. Got um, a spring loaded mechanism instead of a plastic button. That lever there goes through this slot here, and that slot closes a record switch back here. But if that um, record disable tab on the cassette isn't present, then that piece of plastic there will block that from working. So that's how that works. I won't disassemble that any further. In order to get at the, some of these parts, we're going to need to detach this cassette player from this plastic housing. And this is further than I've been before in terms of disassembling this. I only did a kind of a bit, little reconnaissance the other weekend on this. Yeah, now we've got the um, cassette by itself. 